morning, everyone, and welcome to The Early Show. Today's hot topic, women who prostitute their own men's talents for money. Could it be that men have been groomed to be bigger prostitutes than women? Would anybody imagine so? Could that, could it be true? And if so, could it be that women are better pips than men? Hands down, what do you think? Now when I use the words pimp and prostitute as it pertains to this particular video, I'm not talking about sex. I mean that women are misusing the professional talents of men in order to extract cash from them, like an ATM machine, okay? So you put men out on the corner just like uh, pimps put women out on the corner. So in real life, the pimp targets then chooses a woman to turn tricks. Well, why does he do this? He wants to earn a profit for himself. Now similarly, women target, date, and marry men for financial gain, mimicking the same patterns of pimps. So, a lot of people don't think about relationships between the opposite sexes this way. No, 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 no. They can't imagine it. But there is a famous saying that goes, if you think twice, you'll be smarter than anyone else in the room. You, can be, you see that a lot of people simply don't think twice. This saying alludes to the fact that most people only think once. Now, at the Men's Channel, we always encourage you to think for yourself and much more than that, think deeper beyond the surface level because a lot of stuff that you see out here today, they're trying to convince you on something shallow. What I reveal to you now should open your eyes a little wider than what they already are. In truth, we could have aptly named the opening of this video, How Women Use Reverse Psychology on Their Own Men. Because that's what a lot of you see today. A lot of what you see. For many generations, men have been hoodwinked. I, I say hoodwinked, bamboozled, made the fool of as providers. And you see that a lot over those last 50 years. They've been made to believe that they are caring for a woman who loves them, while that woman is caring for herself and herself only. When I was putting together this report, I was absolutely blown away with the realization that everything a woman does to extract wealth from her own man is precisely what a pimp does in marketing a young lady's body and her talents to gain cash in the streets. It's the, the similarity is so amazing. And although the pimp does not use his own body in the sex act, he keeps the lion's share of the prostitute's money for himself. So even though he didn't screw, it's his money. This is similar to a wife who takes her husband's entire weekly paycheck and gives him a small allowance for himself out of there. Here you go, $20, you'll be all right. The husband has prostituted his soul and his talents to excess, which leaves him busted, broken, and grim, just like the prostitute. Even though his wife respects him as much as a pimp, the husband will do whatever he can to please her, just like a, uh, the prostitute does for the uh, pimp. So, the street pimp sees the financial potential in an attractive woman. The wife sees the financial potential in her husband. Now, imagine, men see beauty as currency, right? Guys see women as attractive, that's a currency. So men see beauty as a currency. Women see men as currency, but not beauty, just a simple male as earning potential. So there's that when a single woman sizes up a vulnerable male for the sake of enriching herself, she becomes a pimp. And like a pimp, this woman realizes that if she pretends on an undetectable level <laughs> to care for her mark, she can get him to turn tricks for the duration of his business career, straight to the grave. She understands, like the pimp, that she can push him, but so far. Can she, so far, no further. He'll crack. Before he cracks, uh, she knows to get out. Should a male prostitute ever lose the ability to keep her living in the manner that she has a match for herself, she will change him with another, what you guys call monkey branching, for a more financially youthful mark. His wife, similar to the pimp, expects a greater output after the wedding and that she put her out in the street. Similar to the prostitute, the husband seeks to please his pimp with purchases, such gifts as gold chains for his wife, just like the pimp, 
uh, fur coats for his wife, just like the prostitute buys for the pimp, Cadillacs, and high heel shoes. Now, if he refuses to keep her in the lifestyle she enjoys, she will divorce him and get the money anyway. And the government backs her in doing this. Even a real street prostitute doesn't have this type of nightmare hanging over her head years after being released from bondage. That's amazing. A guy can be in bondage to the grave, even though he's no longer married to the same woman. Now, like a real pimp, the wife abuses her prostitute husband behind closed doors and makes him keep it a secret. So she just slapped the shit out of this guy and tells him not to tell anybody. Or she will have him arrested by reversing the complaint onto him. Like a pimp, she can literally backhand him in public or private without any real fear of arrest. You do that as a guy, you're going straight off to jail. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. Because every good pimp has the law and the government officials in their back pocket. Like a pimp, she sends him to the streets each and every day, cold and hungry, to work for her without any care or thanks. So, go sell yourself, she says to him, to the highest bidder, so I can have a better life for myself. Like a pimp, she can have his life done away with, permanently if she wishes, and have you believe that it was due to self-defense. That's why he died because he was attacking me. Now, like a pimp, she can have a muscle man beat the crap out of him if he steps out of line. If she doesn't have a strong man, the government and law enforcement will do. Doesn't matter, they'll step in, they'll defend her honor, even though she has no honor. Now, in closing, even though we had a good time laughing about the subject today, I know that societies are built and maintained by men for the benefit and protection of women. Don't believe so? You are looking at a combat veteran. My government sent me to a war fully protected with a Kevlar helmet, a reinforced ballistic jacket, an M17 gas mask on my hip in case a biological agent was released in the air to defend my life and protect me, an M16 weapon to which to defend myself with. Along with that, they gave me 120 rounds of 7.62 ammunition for the M16. Enough ammunition to take out a small army. They also gave me four M67 fragmentary grenades to take it on a larger assault. As a cavalry scout, I was protected behind several inches of reinforced armor while aboard that vessel. On that vehicle, there were five additional lethal weapons to include the main gun attached to the turret. Now, I left that battlefield with my life intact and also my finances intact to protect my finances. They protected me as well as the equipment they gave me to defend my life. And I commend them for doing such. I really thank them for that. But where that same government fails me in protecting my rights is once I have returned to the United States and faced divorce or false accusation by a spouse, that same decent government sends me into an unprotected court without authority and the family court is against me. In this arena, I am vulnerable as a baby to a spouse who has made herself an enemy of mine. This spiteful spouse can literally rob me of all of my possessions with the help of that same government who sought that no harm came to me in the most vicious attack that I will ever experience in my entire life. What a strong defense on one hand and such weak, limp-wristed defense on the other? Who can tell? So from the same powerful government uh, in society who convinced both genders are equal, that's what they say, men and women are equal. They beat us into little boys since they're children. If we were so equal, then why does the government supply wives with just as many protective measures off the battlefield as they do a man on the battlefield? Can you tell me? When you find out the answer, let me know. I'm looking for it for free. We'll be right back in just a minute. Don't go nowhere.
Hey fellas, this is your host, Charles Rivers for MNN. Asking you guys, don't forget about us once a month. Make sure you become a Patreon on our Patreon site. Make sure you donate through our PayPal. It's at the top of the page if you're on YouTube. And there's links in the description. Also, if you want to get my book at uh, Amazon.com, the letters M-G-T-O-W, or Men Going Their Own Way, and this book shows you how to navigate the field around feminists or women who simply hate guys. That there's not just one woman that's gunning for you and your wallet and your children and your future, but there's several different categories. But they come to you in one particular vein, faking love for short term. So if you want to get that book, that's the curve. It's a red cover with the yellow writing on there. It's got the M-G-T-O-W on the side. Or you can look on it uh, under MGTOW, Men Going Their Own Way by Charles Rivers. Love for you guys to buy it. Love for you to be a patron of the site so we can keep going. Next March, we're moving to an even larger uh, production studio. And you guys will love it. We're going to our own channel. And that channel is going to be on all the time. And we'll use your input and your stories. No matter which country you're in, you can send us actually your story. So, love you guys. Make sure you do what? Become a patron of the site. Now, just watch the site. Stay with us. We'll be right back. On this episode of The Man's Kitchen, bacon-wrapped honey barbecue oven-roasted wings. You won't want to miss it. Good afternoon guys and welcome to the man's kitchen. Today we're making bacon wrapped honey barbecue oven roasted wings. Try to say that all in a short breath, see if you can. So what we're going to do today, we're going to take some traditional chicken wings. These are some meteor ones. We're going to take some uh, apple wood smoked bacon and we're going to wrap that and then we're going to fry it in a pan and then we're going to finish it in the oven. But not before we add some barbecue sauce on it. So we're going to use some Grey Poupon, that's going to go inside the barbecue sauce. We're going to use some Bullseye uh, Honey Barbecue. And we'll use about a tablespoon of Welch's uh, Jelly. And we're going to use salt and pepper to season. So both of these are about a tablespoon. A tablespoon of Grey Poupon is going to give us some tang. A little bit more sweetness in the uh, Welch's Jelly. And the Bullseye, mix those together, all together in a bowl, just like that. Okay, after we fry the chicken, we're going to go ahead and coat that. So I've already got some oil in the pan. Okay, we got that pretty warm. Uh, so when we finish, what we're going to do is we're going to put them in these pans inside of the oven, put a lid on them. You can get those at any kind of dollar store, I guess. And they don't cost much. When you finish, you can throw them away. So we're going to go ahead and start. I've already washed the chicken. I have salt and peppered it to season. We take the chicken. And what you do is you go ahead and tuck that in the back there. Now it's not going to worry about it burning because that's going to be in the oven in the pan anyway. So we take each one of them and go ahead and do like you would do in yoga and try to get that tucked. Okay. So now it really doesn't matter. You don't have to tuck that. That's just a personal preference for me. So you don't have to tuck that. Okay. That's what I do. So there we go. And one more. But it makes it easier for me, I think, when you're adding the bacon to it. So. We'll take that and we already go around. It's kind of slippery there. We'll go around one full time at least with the bacon. Okay? So let's go around one full time. We take that and turn it down into the pan. I go ahead and put that pan up a little bit higher now. I had on a medium heat, I put it on high heat. So we put the next one in there, and this one's bigger, so I probably could take at least two pieces of that bacon. Okay? Start a small end, we go around once. And for those of you who don't know, I used to own my own place of food. So yes, I do know how to cook. If you're a dude, you know how to cook because you can't have nobody cook for you. Am I right, fellas? So we turn those down the media side. So we always look for the media side. That's a narrow side there. We look for the media side on top. So I got a couple more pieces left to start at the bottom. 
And that bacon is going to adhere to that chicken. It's going to fry it to a crisp. And it's going to do even well when put it inside the oven. So don't worry about it if it doesn't particularly hold still to it. Last piece here. And that's why I'm using gloves. Uh, because I can just throw the gloves away when I finish with the chicken. But you don't need gloves. You can just wash your hands. Okay? Take the last piece there turn it downwards. We throw away that and the gloves. And we'll put the lid on it. Just like such. We have a little time. And what we'll do is through the magic of television, we'll go ahead and let that uh, brown and we'll see you guys back in a few minutes. And I'll show you what we're going to do to put it in the oven to prepare it. So, if you got a beer, this is a good time to take it and drink it. Don't drink to excess. I'll see you guys back in a few minutes, okay? In the man's kitchen. Don't go away. I'm not. Hey guys, you can see we're back. And through the magic of television, I've fried up the four pieces of wings with the bacon around But not enough where it's going to be burnt to a crisp. The most of the cooking is going to be done in the oven. So that's what it should look like right there. Okay? So we're going to press somebody make sure it looks just like that. Now what we want to do is, like I said, most of the cooking is going to take place in the oven. So we're going to use an additional 45 minutes in the oven. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that sauce told you earlier, remember? The honey barbecue sauce, get a little bit of Welch's uh, jelly in there, we got some Dijon mustard, the honey uh, barbecue is going to be topped on that, right? And so we got the apple with smoked bacon that's wrapped around the chicken with salt and pepper. So what we're going to do is put a bunch of that on there because that's going to actually do most of the bacon in the oven. Just that run down, yeah, just that good ooh. See that right there? See right? Don't be cheap. Don't, don't be cheap. I don't care if it's taking a bath in there. Sometimes chicken needs a bath. You ever seen a dirty chicken? Alright, so you take that and let it run. Let it run like you do on Friday when you need a job. Come on out of here till Monday, let it run. Alright. Some more to cover that. Some more to cover the expenses for your mother-in-law. A little bit on this side for child support and alimony. Get kind of hungry there. That's for the judge you pay under the table. And the last little bit for Uncle Sam. Okay, put that to the side. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put those lids on there. Okay, they come, they actually come purchased with lids. And so that's gonna go ahead in the oven, we close that down around there. The oven's already on 350 degrees. It's been preheated, so we're gonna put that in there for 45 minutes. 45 minutes, so we're gonna have something with that. You can have a mashed potato with that. You can have some of those baked potatoes I told you about. What is it, five videos back. Uh, you can have french fries, we're gonna have french fries with that. Okay, close that down. You'd be surprised when you make something like this. Your friends, they never go away. They always come back. Just, you think they're at their mother's house somewhere. Can I uh, come over your house and eat again? I don't think so, though. Okay, so we got those closed up. we we'll put them inside the oven. You can put them directly on the grate inside the oven, or you can put them on the pan. And like I said, let them cook for 45 minutes. And we'll bring them back out. Let you guys see how they look. Plate it, okay? Don't go nowhere, we'll be right back. Enjoy the music in the meantime, and I'll see you guys in about 45 minutes with the Magic Guitar Version. Thanks for joining us in a minute. We'll see you. Let's put those in the oven. Okay, guys, there you have it. For the Magic of Television, we completed the dish. Bacon wrapped honey barbecue oven roasted wings. Now when you finish them after the 45 minutes in the oven like I showed you, this exactly looks like too bad you don't have smell of vision Can you see that there? See that's nice. See that coating? Okay. So like I said, we're going to try that with some fries. So there you have it. Oh, 
hope you guys enjoy. Practice the recipe. You can do it yourself. It's easy. Bacon wrapped honey barbecue oven roasted wings with fries. Enjoy. We'll see you back in just a minute. Thanks for watching Eminem. Mm -mm -mm. mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna have to take a longer break. I know I'm gonna eat this before I come back on it. No. You know what? Yep, I, I gotta do it. Yeah, I see you. I love you like a brother, but I gotta go. Headlines for October the 7th, 2020. In Washington, U.S. President Donald Trump still being treated for COVID-19 abruptly ended talks with Democrats on an economic aid package on Tuesday. Drawing criticism from President uh, rival Joe Biden that he was abandoning Americans in the midst of a pandemic. Tonight brings us to vice presidential debates. I am predicting that this will be the highest rated vice presidential vice president debate in history. They're normally a bore, but this was going to be something. It seems that Vice President Mike Pence and Democratic challenger Kamala Harris will square off tonight in their only debate as President Donald Trump's coronavirus diagnosis and the ongoing pandemic continue to roil the U.S. presidential contest. So one's got a problem, one's got an adventure. In financial news affected by the pandemic, Wells Fargo and company has cut 700 commercial banking jobs as part of the workforce reduction that could ultimately impact tens of thousands of staffs. And this is reported by Bloomberg News. So they decided to, uh, that the knowledge of the map, the bank resumed job cuts in early August, if you remember, after the pause layoffs in March because of COVID-19. It's amazing, people are losing out big time. So it seems as if COVID is not the only storm on the horizon. Houston uh, has a problem right now too. Oil and gas workers withdrew in mass from offshore production facilities as Hurricane Delta grew into a powerful storm over the Caribbean on its way to the Gulf of Mexico. Delta's winds reached 145 miles per hour as the storm sped toward Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula and eventually entry into the Gulf of Mexico, whose warm waters uh, usually were restored to a Category 4, the National Hurricane uh, Administration said. Oil producers have evacuated 50 cent production facilities in the U.S. Gulf of Mexico and by Tuesday hauled 540,000 barrels per day of oil and 230 million cubic feet per day of natural gas. That region accounts for about 17% of U.S. oil output. That is going to affect it. Shortly, you may watch your gas prices rise. Just like this channel, we're rising. We'll be back in a minute. You guys sit there. The weather's coming up next. Don't go nowhere. Bringing you the latest weather forecast for cities around the United States. In Chicago, highs 72 degrees today and sunny. 0% chance of rain, winds west 7 miles per hour. Around New York City, highs 75 degrees and sunny, 0% chance of rain, winds southwest 9 miles per hour. If you're visiting Cleveland, highs 68 degrees, cloudy and windy today, 0% chance of rain, Winds west, southwest, at a blustery 24 miles per hour. In Denver, Colorado, the Mile High City, highs 83 degrees, sunny, 0% chance of rain. Winds south, southwest, 4 miles per hour. In the nation's capital, highs 83 degrees and sunny, 0% chance of rain. Winds southwest, 6 miles per hour. Heading south to Tallahassee, highs a balmy 87 degrees, but mostly cloudy, 5% chance of rain. Winds east, northeast, and 5 miles per hour. And finally, in North Anchorage, Alaska, highs 50 degrees, partly cloudy, 5% chance of rain. Winds south, southeast, and 3 miles per hour. Tune in tomorrow for the weather on Eminem.
bringing you the latest weather forecasts for cities around the United States. In Chicago, highs 72 degrees today and sunny, 0% chance of rain, winds west 7 miles per hour. Around New York City, highs 75 degrees and sunny, 0% chance of rain, winds southwest 9 miles per hour. If you're visiting Cleveland, highs 68 degrees, cloudy and windy today, 0% chance of rain, winds west southwest at a blustery 24 miles per hour. In Denver, Colorado, the Mile High City, highs 83 degrees, sunny, 0% chance of rain, winds south southwest 4 miles per hour. In the nation's capital, highs 83 degrees and sunny, 0% chance of rain, winds southwest 6 miles per hour. Heading south to Tallahassee, highs of balmy 87 degrees but mostly cloudy, 5% chance of rain, winds east, northeast at 5 miles per hour. And finally, in North Anchorage, Alaska, highs 50 degrees, partly cloudy, 5% chance of rain, winds south, southeast at 3 miles per hour. Tune in tomorrow for the weather on m and It's five o'clock somewhere on the planet, and today we're doing cocktails. Welcome to the man's bartender. Don't go anywhere, brother. You're gonna enjoy this segment. How you doing? Welcome back. Today we're going to be doing something in the man's bartender. You ready to get a drink on? We're about to do it. So today we're going to do a sweet vermouth uh, cocktail. Okay, so we need some vermouth. Okay, you use a martini rossi like I got here. You're going to need some ice in the mixer. So I got that about a third away in the mixer. You're gonna use a lemon for juice. And to top off the rim of the glass, one slice. With a slice in the middle of it. Pour for measurement, two ounces. Maraschino cherries. And some of the juice from the maraschino cherries. Okay? So, we're gonna mix all of that in the mixer, then pour it in the glass and enjoy. One of the first things we're gonna do in this drink, since it's a cocktail, and there's a little bit of sweetness to it, we're going to take a couple of those maraschino cherries and put in the bottom. Yeah, we could take three. You remember when you was a kid, if your mother had this, you would sneak in the refrigerator and steal it for yourself. And then when she asked you, you lie, I didn't do that. It must have been a dog or something. Wouldn't me. All right. We're going to take the masher and mash that up a little bit. Okay. Just to expose some of the pulp of that. Okay. So it flavors the drink. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put two ounces, right? Sweet vermouth. There's two ounces right there. The larger portion typically on one of these measures is a two ounce. The bottom portion is typically the one ounce. So we're using two ounces today. <clears throat> put that back there. And we're going to use, uh, I guess, a couple of, let's just use, uh, see how we do it. We use one, and you know, it's always use um, a normal tablespoon, because I know you guys have this at the house. And you know, it's always enjoy spilling at the same time. So we use two. Okay, there we go. So we use two, we use, we'll use three, but we spilled it right down the table. We're gonna use uh, a couple of squeezes of the lemon, one on that one half, and some on the other half. Okay, might be real messy. Excuse me a minute, we're gonna get some simple syrup. And the simple syrup is nothing more than water and sugar, and sometimes people slow cook it uh, at low temperature on the stove. But that's simple syrup, so about, I guess about, uh, one or two uh, ounces of that. That's it. Not too much. All righty. So there we have it. Now we're going to put the lid on it. 
Remember the ice is inside. Shake it up. In about 30 seconds. You can do the whole thing. All right, so we got that all shaken up. You can see how it's frozen because the ice was in there, right? Take the lid off, we can get it all. You know, the magic of television never betrays. So what we could also do is I'll take some of this ice that I have and put some of that in there. Is it too early in the morning to drink or is it just me? Okay, so now we pour that in there. And that's enough. Put a cocktail and put a lemon around the glass. And I even put uh, a couple of lemon seeds in there for you guys. Make sure you don't drink that. So there you have it. Vermouth cocktail. Wherever it finds you, may you guys enjoy. To you, salute. Oh, fantastic. Make sure you make this recipe. Liquor stores where you are. Wine and alcohol weren't just made to be drunken from the bottle. Mixed drinks. Take care, guys. We'll see you soon. I hope to see you back next time on The Man's Bartender. Join me each week, and we're going to be making some great drinks, some crazy drinks, and stuff that you can prepare for your friends at a party where it looks like you've been a bartender for a long time. Thank you for watching him in it. Welcome back. Today in the men's medical moment, we are gonna be discussing carpal tunnel syndrome and how it affects a man's ability to earn a living. You can't work if you don't have good hands. This information is courtesy of the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke. So what is carpal tunnel syndrome? Carpal tunnel syndrome or CTS occurs when the median nerve which runs from the forearm into the palm of the hand becomes pressed or squeezed at the wrist. This is the first indication. The carpal tunnel, a narrow rigid passageway or ligament and bones at the base of the hand houses the median nerve and the tendons that bend the fingers. So you need that to bend your fingers, okay? The median nerve provides feeling to the palm, side of the thumb, the index finger, middle and part of the ring fingers. It also controls some small muscles at the base of the thumb. Now, Sometimes thickening from the lining of irritated tendons or other swelling narrows the tunnel and at that point it compresses the median nerve. The results may be numbness, weakness, or sometimes pain in the hand and wrist. So what are the symptoms of carpal tunnel? Symptoms usually start gradually with uh, frequent numbness or tingling in the fingers, especially the thumb, index, and middle finger. Some people with CTS say their fingers feel useless and swollen, even though little or no swelling is apparent at the site. The symptoms often first appear in one or both hands during the nighttime. So when you're sleeping at night, that's when the pain gets you. The dominant hand is usually affected first and produces the most severe symptoms. A person with CTS may wake up feeling the need to shake out. They want to shake out their hands or wrists uh, at that particular time. As symptoms worsen, people might feel tingling during the day, especially with certain activities, such as taking a phone call, reading a book or newspaper, and driving. Now, hand weakness may uh, make it difficult to grasp small objects or perform other manual tasks, and you need this for a job, right? So how is carpal tunnel syndrome diagnosed? 
Early diagnosis and treatment are important to avoid permanent damage to the median nerve. So if that's damage, that's a big problem for you. Bye bye child. A physical examination of the hands, arms, shoulders, and neck can help determine if the person's complaints are related to the uh, daily activities or to an underlying disorder. A physician can rule out other conditions that uh, mimic carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, and there are many. The wrist is examined for tenderness or swelling and discoloration. Each finger should be tested for sensation and the muscles at the base of the hand should be examined for strength and signs of atrophy. Now, how does one treat carpal tunnel syndrome? What do we do? Treatments for carpal tunnel syndrome should begin as early as possible. So when you feel that pain, don't wait for it. Do something about it, brother. But under a doctor's direction, not your own. Underlying causes such as diabetes or arthritis should be treated first. Non-surgical treatments include splinting. Now when you splint, initial treatment is usually a splint worn at nighttime and avoiding daytime activities that may provoke symptoms, right? Some people with slight discomfort may wish to take frequent breaks from task at work to rest their hand if the wrist is red, warm, and swollen. Now, if you apply cold packs, you can help uh, to prevent this problem. So over-the-counter medicines also, in special circumstances, uh, various medications can ease the pain and swelling associated with carpal tunnel syndrome. So you can use non-steroidal and inflammatory drugs such as aspirin, ibuprofen, and other non-prescription pain relievers. They work well. Always consult your physician. Now, they may provide a short-term relief from discomfort, but haven't been shown to treat CTS. Prescription medicines, corticosteroids such as prednisone or the drug lidocaine can be infect, uh, injected directly into the wrist or taken by mouth under the supervision of your doctor. Now, alternative therapies include acupuncture and chiropractic care have benefited some individuals, but the effectiveness remain unproven. And an exception is yoga, which has been shown to reduce pain and improve strength. Uh, among those CTS, you can also use surgery. So search for carpal tunnel releases is one of the most common surgeries performed in the United States today. Generally, surgery involves severing a ligament around the wrist to reduce pressure on the median nerve. Surgery is also done under local or regional anesthesia and does not require an overnight stay, overnight stay at the hospital. So that's pretty costly, right, if you stay overnight. Many people require surgery on both hands, uh, while all carpal tunnel surgery involves cutting the ligament to relieve pressure on the nerve. Now, there are two different methods used by surgeons, okay? But to accomplish this, some individuals may have an infections, nerve damage, stiffness, and pain at the scar all, always. Almost always there is a decrease in strength initially, which improves over time. Most people need to modify work activity for several weeks following the surgery, and some people may need to adjust job duties completely or even change jobs. So after recovering from surgery, this is what you might consider. So recurrence of the carpal tunnel syndrome following treatment is rare. We'll be right back in a moment with the man's bartender. Stay with us and take care of your health, brother. Go see your physician. We'll be back in just a moment.